today. In another module, we talked about the problem of dimensions. Uh, dimensions are distinguished from uh, units uh, in that dimensions uh, simply refer to uh, things that you can measure, uh, uh, quantities like length, mass, uh, time, and so forth. Uh, but of course, uh, simply saying that a length or a mass exists uh, it doesn't really get you very far. Uh, what one thing you need to do is to be able to quantify how much of a length or a mass or a time that you're dealing with. And so uh, w when, you in, w when you engage in scientific uh, work, you have to be able to measure uh, something in quantifiable units. That is, you have to have some relationship between the quantity of a length or a mass and some number. And the, uh, the uh, uh, factor that is used to quantify quantity of length, mass, or time, or any of the other dimensions uh, is uh, referred to as a unit. Now, units have an interesting uh, history to them. Uh, uh, ever since uh, human beings have had commerce, uh, uh, there's been the issue of, of, of being able to measure things. Uh, uh, if I, I'm a land seller, for example, and I want to sell you an acre of land for uh, so much, you have to have a reliable way of being able to measure an acre of land. Now, the traditional way of measuring an acre of land is to, uh, is, is, is to quantify it as the area of land that a team of oxen can plow in one day. All right, now, if I'm an unscrupulous land dealer and I say that I've got this acre of land and uh, I'll let you uh, measure it, I'll even provide the oxen for you, I could very easily cheat you by providing a team of tired oxen that wouldn't plow as much ground as, uh, as say, a well-rested uh, team of oxen could. So, uh, so th th there's this necessity that grew up out of the need for reliable commerce to be able to reliably measure things, to be able to reliably uh, quantify things. And what I'd like to do is to just take you through a little bit of the traditional history of units. And uh, in another module, we'll talk about the way in which uh, systems of units have been standardized in uh, modern science. All right, now uh, let's take a very simple unit that we're all familiar with. Uh, let's take the unit of the inch, which is a unit of the dimension of length. Uh, this has a kind of an interesting history to it. Uh, uh, the uh, word inch uh, has two derivations. Uh, uh, one is from the Anglo-Saxon, which is Y-N-C-A, inche, and uh, that means uh, thumb. That's the Anglo-Saxon word for thumb. In Latin, the inch has its derivation in the word uncia. Uh, and uncia means twelfth part. Uh, it's, a, it's an entirely different, uh, different uh, language, an entirely different tradition of uh, measuring things. Now, the reason the Anglo-Saxons uh, referred to an inche is that uh, they used their thumbs as units of measurement. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my thumb, I'm going to zoom in here with the screen right here, and I'm going to say, I'm going to try and Try and trace out my thumb right here. Okay, so there's my thumb. And the Anglo-Saxon inche refers to, until it comes back, the width of the thumb. That's why the, uh, the word inche uh, means thumb and where this unit of measurement uh, comes from. And uh, the idea is that the width of a thumb is equal to one inch. Now, if we take a ruler and we come along and look at this, we see that it's, 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 not, it's not too bad. It's very close to one inch. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and this was used as a fundamental uh, measure of length uh, in uh, Anglo-Saxon times. Uh, now, of course, some people are bigger than others. Some people have, uh, have wider thumbs than others. And so the same problem exists in standardizing the inch uh, so that uh, you don't run into the tired oxen problem. And so what the Anglo-Saxons did was they standardized uh, an inch as the width of uh, three barley corns. The idea here is that you take something that's less variable than the thumb and you use that as your standard. And I've taken three uh, barley corns, those basically refer to kernels of corn, and we've lined them up next to one another and you can see that it comes pretty pretty close, uh, and uh, and so that's the origin of the uh, of, of the inch. Uh, with the uh, Latin, uh, the inch is uh, the twelfth part of what's called a foot. A and in this instance, it was a the uh, old Latin uh, term was. Uh, 
the pes naturalis, which is the length of one foot. Now, that's not quite 12 inches, as our modern definition of foot would 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 uh, would um, would uh, would indicate, but it's actually closer to about 10 inches or so. But uh, the Latins used the word uh, uncia to describe the 12th part of a foot. Now, uh, this is just an illustration of, uh, of the fact that, that uh, units have a long history in, 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 in lots of different cultures uh, uh, as because uh, different cultures grow up in different uh, traditions of commerce and markets and those kinds of things. You have a plethora of different kinds of units out there. We've seen one example here. Uh, Anglo-Saxons will define an inch in one way and uh, Romans would define an inch in uh, another way. And if you're going to avoid chaos, if you're going to have trade, between these two different kinds of cultures, then you need to be able to have some kind of a standard. And so this has led to the, uh, the this led to the formulation, uh, uh, actually beginning in medieval Europe, of a system of so-called customary units. And and customary units are are simply agreed upon standards that that, that everyone will uh, agree to. Now, the history of English units is especially interesting in this regard because, of course, uh, one of the things that happened in England was that, uh, was that a primarily Anglo-Saxon Anglo culture, which had one way of measuring things, was invaded by a primarily uh, Roman culture during the Norman uh, conquest. And, and this uh, led to all kinds of uh, interesting conflicts over ways that you measure, measure things. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that came out of the Norman conquest was, was the reconciliation of these very very different, uh, very different systems of uh, units. So, for example, uh, if you uh, if you talk about some other uh, units of measurement, uh, uh, one of the units of measurement that we use for the length, for example, is the yard, and the yard uh, we currently uh, define as 36 inches. Uh, we have other means of standardizing the inch, of course, but uh, but back in uh, back in the olden days uh, during Norman conquest times, uh, uh, this wasn't uh, this, this this there was no really agreed upon standard. So so everyone needed to have some standard that they would agree to. And uh, after the Norman Conquest, for example, uh, uh, they defined the yard as the distance between the tip of your finger out here, the, my, in this case my right hand, and the tip of the nose. And the standard they agreed on was a distance for King Henry I. And uh, uh, I'm a big guy, and uh, the, uh, the distance between the uh, nose and the tip of my finger in this case is about 39 inches, but apparently old Henry I was uh, shorter, and so uh, his came very uh, much closer to uh, the 36 inch yard that we, that we are uh, familiar with. Uh, same thing with the concept of the fathom. The fathom uh, is used as a, as a unit of nautical measure, and uh, this was uh, measured with, uh, with, with plumbing rope. And so sailors, uh, in paying out lengths of rope, would, uh, would, 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 uh, would, would basically pay out a length of rope between the two ends of their outstretched arms. And that uh, corresponds to the definition of the fathom. And the fathom is uh, six feet, and my fathom uh, comes out to be a little bit shorter than that. Uh, 69 inches is where my uh, finger ended up with, a little bit uh, shorter than the 72 inches. That, uh, that, is the, uh, that is the formal definition of uh, the fathom. And so uh, these initial um, ways of measuring, uh, measuring length uh, even though they were standardized to one person's uh, particular body dimensions, uh, uh, that was a standard that had to be either uh, um, uh, made permanent somehow, or 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 uh, uh, some kind of, or, or otherwise you would have a chaos resulting when different kings of different statures would come into uh, in, into play, and so uh, you find various uh, ways of trying to standardize these things. Uh, 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 for example, uh, there was a difficulty in standardizing the uh, Anglo-Saxon definition of a foot from the Roman definition of a foot, and so what everyone agreed upon was to lay out a line. At one of the pillars at the base of St. Paul's Cathedral that uh, everyone would agree was the standard foot. And so uh, the, in this way, uh, customary uh, units, uh, uh, systems of customary units built up, uh, built upon these kind of ad hoc uh, needs for standardization and uh, generalization. Now, uh, 
uh, despite all these efforts at standardization, uh, uh, still uh, it was very, very difficult to be able to uh, standardize weights and measures. Uh, and again, the role of commerce and trade between different cultures uh, plays a, a very important role in this. Uh, uh, for example, uh, 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 let's look at the uh, measurements of volume. Uh, the gallon in the uh, English system is the principal means of, of, of measuring volume. Uh, that's one of the primary uh, units. and uh, uh, the trouble is that uh, gallons are defined differently based upon what particular uh, cultures are trying to sell or not. Uh, for example, you have a dry gallon, which uh, consists of, uh, is defined as, uh, as eight pounds of uh, wheat barley corns, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that was the measure of volume that was favored by people who tried to sell and buy grain. On the other hand, you have uh, gallons that were defined for for uh, ale or different gallons that were defined for wine or those sorts of things. And uh, to make matters worse, uh, Roman uh, tradition had a different definition of gallons than uh, English uh, measurements did. Uh, and you, we could go on and on about uh, about uh, w the similar kinds of problems that exist uh, uh, for weights as well. Finally, one, uh, finally one uh, interesting um, uh, phenomenon that explains a lot of the units is that uh, when you have a unit of measure, you have to have some way of quantifying multiples of that unit. And so, for example, in the English system, uh, you have 12 inches making up one larger unit of length of foot, and you have three feet making up a larger unit of measure, the yard. And, uh, and, and uh, if you notice uh, those particular uh, uh, measurements are based upon numbers that can be divided by three. And again, we come back to our Anglo-Saxon definition of the inch based upon the width of three barley corns. Uh, the tendency of English units to come in multiples of three, like for example, uh, uh, 12 inches, four times three uh, to the foot, or three, yard, three feet to the yard, and uh, those sorts of things. Uh, uh, those derive from this fundamental uh, 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 reliance on units of three to be able to be able to measure things. On the other hand, the Romans uh, uh, tended to like to divide the world up uh, into multiples of five and multiples of ten. And so, for example, the Roman mile uh, comes from the Roman abbreviation for 1,000. Uh, 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 Romans defined a mile as the length uh, that you could cover with 1,000 strides. Uh, and, uh, of course, this referred to, this was uh, useful for for uh, for quantifying uh, measurements of troops and, uh, and and those sorts of things that the Romans uh, uh, tried to do. And so uh, if you look at the uh, Roman types of units, you find that they tend to be divided into multiples of five and multiples of 10. And of course, this corresponds uh, very nicely to the system of Roman units, which has different symbols for ones, fives, tens, fifties, uh, and so forth. <coughs> now. Obviously, uh, as fascinating as this is as history, it nevertheless is extremely confusing and very hard to quantify things in a standard way. Uh, we can define uh, units of volume as the gallon. We can have a particular standard measure, but we still cannot escape uh, uh, this, 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 this cultural influence on, on our units. Uh, for example, in Canada, back when they, before they were a metric uh, country, uh, they would uh, sell their uh, liquids in uh, units of imperial gallons. Uh, we, on the other hand, uh, uh, sell our liquids in the form of American gallons, and those two are measured different quantities of things. So, so even uh, with all the attempts at standardization, the influence of culture is very, very strong and is carried over in our units and makes units very, very hard to deal with. And in another module, what we'll talk about is the system of units that, that uh, scientists have developed to uh, not only uh, uh, standardize the measurement of different kinds of dimensions, but also to make the conversion of measurements from one type of unit to another very, very simple. <laughs>